Yeah, talking about uh, investing in the non-oil sector. That's why that's what the NEPC has done recently when it launched the trade house in Cairo, Egypt. The project seeks to provide a central location where made in Nigeria goods can be shipped, displayed, and distributed within an identified location. The executive director of Nigeria Export Promotion Council, Dr. Ezra Yakusak, led the team there. Now joins us from our Abuja studio to tell us. Uh, some of the things that happened there and what we should expect uh, now that the trade house has been launched. Uh, good morning, Dr. Yakusak. Yakusak, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first of all, how was the trip to uh, Cairo and back? Our trip was great. Uh, we had a wonderful time in Cairo. Uh, we enjoyed the Egyptian hospitality. Great. So now that the trade house has been launched, What's, what's going to be different? What should we expect? Okay, I think I need to also emphasize on the need for that uh, trade house in Egypt. Uh, Section 42J of uh, the NAPC Act empower us to set up uh, trade promotion uh, facilities in Nigeria and outside this country. And uh, that prompted us to set up that, and that includes commercial uh, uh, exhibition centers and commercial centers. So in line with this provision, uh, and based on the fact that we saw the trends for the past 10 years, the non-oil export trend has been such in a, a way that, I mean, it's, it's traditionally to the West. Uh, you won't believe it, as at last year, uh, the, 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 the export destination, export destination of our major products, the top 10 uh, was, um, the first is, uh, uh, Brazil, uh, China, Netherlands, um, uh, Belgium, Japan, uh, Vietnam, Germany, and of course uh, United Nations, United, uh, United Kingdom. Now, out of this, you realize that there is no African country on the top 10 list. And that is not right. We felt we need to change the trajectory. We need to change things. And that's why we came up with the idea of the uh, export trade house, mainly in Africa. And like you said, the first one was launched in Egypt. The idea is to send out or to ship Nigerian goods out there where they will be readily available for, uh, uh, I mean, for, for export in, 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 the, in, the, in Egypt. And of course, we wanted to look at Egypt as a launching pad for, I mean, to reach the non Northern African area, I mean, Northern African region. So that's why we uh, launched that uh, program there. But I also need to tell you that the trading pattern between Nigeria and Egypt is not, is, is, it's, it's, uh, it's skewed in favor of Egypt. You won't believe it that as of last year, the, the export to Egypt from Nigeria was $1.8 million. While the import from Egypt to Nigeria was uh, $182 million. You can see the disparity. So there is need for us, we feel the need uh, to, to change uh, things and also leverage on the African continental free trade area, which is coming up and, uh, uh, so that Nigerian products will be out there, in, not only in Egypt, but in other African countries. Desire that Nigerian products should be out there, but uh, there are steps that we need to take as a country if we really want to meet up. But what commodities will be in focus uh, with this uh, trade house and this uh, uh, window that has been opened? Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much. The commodity that we are looking at are the commodities that have what we call competitive advantage uh, uh, out there. Uh, uh, the first is like sesame seed. Uh, sesame seed is our major uh, exportable product to Egypt. Uh, we have sesame seed. Uh, we have uh, ginger. We have saffron. Uh, we have cocoa powder and cocoa paste. These are some of the commodities, commodities we are looking at uh, um, to, to be exported over there in Egypt. And of course, that does not uh, limit those commodities. There are other commodities that uh, we can export. It depends on the demand there. You know, it's a demand and supply thing. Depends on the demand uh, over there in Egypt. We've heard uh, before now of issues around storage, which affects the quality of the crops, you know, that we export. 
What are you doing around that? I mean, it, it's not the first time I remember when we tried to do the yam exports. Uh, we remember the, the, the bottleneck and the trouble that we, that we went into. So what are you doing in this area so we don't get crops or products that are exported and then they are being sent back or rejected by, by the uh, customers? That's the beauty of this uh, project. Because we had, uh, we had that in mind, we look at all the issues and uh, we felt uh, there is need to, to, to cop that. And of course, I need to inform you that the export trade house is a PPP arrangement, a public-private partnership arrangement between us and JM Goma International and Agrivedi. Agrivedi is actually, a, 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 Agrivedi Limited is actually a, a company based in, in, in Egypt. Uh, uh, they are partners with JM Goma, a, a Nigerian company. So the, the scenario is that once this good, before these goods are exported, JM Goma will look at the goods, uh, look at the exportable standards, standards of the good, and make sure that these goods are of particular standards before being shipped to Egypt to his partner in, uh, in, in Egypt, uh, in Sadat Industrial City, Egypt. So uh, that way, the issue of, uh, of the products, the, the issue of uh, products being bad or anything will be cop completely. So these are some of the measures we are taking to ensure that uh, our products are not rejected out there in Egypt. And you see, I need to also say that once this product reach Egypt, you don't need to have a buyer in Egypt, by the way, with the arrangement we're having, you don't need to have a non-buyer in Egypt. Once this product reach Egypt, uh, the Egyptian company will invite uh, Egyptian buyers there. They will go inspect the goods, look at the goods, and once the goods are of, uh, of, of the standard they want, they will just pick up the goods and, of course, repatriate, repatriate uh, the, the, I mean, the, 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 the money back to Nigeria. And, of course, with this project, you will agree with me that it will enhance an, our foreign exchange inflow. I'm looking forward to that, <laughs> Dr. Yakusak. Really looking forward to that because Forex has been a major challenge for a lot of businesses and business operators in Nigeria. Now, let's look at uh, the farmers. You talked about ginger, sesame seed and all that. Where, where, where do the farmers come in? How do you get them into the picture here? Okay, well, what we intend to do is, uh, what we intend to do is that, we're well, going to actually invite the, uh, uh, the Egyptian company to Nigeria. He's going to talk directly to the producers and the farmers of these commodities. He's going to talk to them. And so they, they see him firsthand and ask any question they want to ask in respect of the project and what exactly they need to do. On our part in NEPC, we are enhancing the capacity of farmers and other SMEs uh, because, of course, they lack capacity. For example, we are organizing trainings on, the, on, uh, on good agricultural practices uh, for farmers to, to increase their yield and, uh, and, and scale up their capacity uh, for export. That's what we are doing. So um, um, very recent, we launched a program, you need to know, we launched a program called Go Global, Go Certification. And uh, the idea behind that project is to ensure that we assist farmers and other SMEs to get certification out there. Because uh, what we realize is that once our goods reach out there, I mean, they, 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 they are rejected. And because of the lack of appropriate or necessary certification that are required internationally, like, of course, like HACCP, like uh, Fair Trade, Halal, uh, and other certification programs. So what we are doing is that we are getting in touch with our farmers and getting in touch with various certifying bodies, certification bodies, who will come and certify our products. And NEPC has been paying. Last year, we, we, we certify about 36 uh, uh, SMEs. And very soon, we are going on air to invite uh, other SMEs that require such facility so that we assist and, 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 and uh, intervene in that area and give them the necessary support. Yeah, it, it, it's good you have that plan, and it's also good you earlier mentioned that you're working with the farmers to try to help them expand production and all that, because sometimes when we talk about the farmers, the middlemen seem to be the ones who, you know, take advantage of the system. So I, I'm asking this to know how you are going to ensure that because of the issue of logistics, transportation from the rural area where some of these farmers are, moving them to the city, that we don't get middlemen taking the profit and leaving the farmer to just, you know, we just peanuts. 
Okay, uh, in terms of middlemen, you, you, realize, you realize that just recently the federal government banned the, uh, I mean, uh, foreigners from going to our villages and picking up those products for export, and which was a very good, very, very good. Uh, Arguably, some decision. people are arguing against really that, Dr. Yakuza. Some people are arguing against that, Dr. Yakuza, you know, that bringing the middlemen officially into the picture will do more harm. Some farmers have spoken against that, but do, do go ahead. Okay, that what we're saying is that, you see, uh, we need to also empower farmers out there. We need to empower them. And uh, like I said, we're having direct interface with them. And you see, the truth about it is that all over the world, you may not completely eliminate middlemen. That's the truth about it. You, you just curtail them on, and, and, and ensure that the farmers have value for their money. Uh, but what we are doing in NEPC is, like I said earlier, is to interface with the farmers. Even the gentleman or the farm from Egypt, once they come, we are not dealing with middlemen. We, are, we know the farmers. We have a direct uh, contact with them. We are going to invite them. He speaks to them directly, and we see how we are going to get their products out there to Egypt. All right, so the war in Ukraine is changing a lot of narrative in the world. Egypt is also being hard hit. You know, I, I, was it yesterday or two days ago, they had to reach out to IMF, IMF for loan and assistance. And then, you know, they, they have a lot of uh, imports from Russia, so their bread is being hugely subsidized. Does this change the picture? Because if they are reaching out to IMF and they're trying to manage their economy, and then we are coming at a time like this. Have you factored that in, into the plan? It doesn't change the, 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 it doesn't change the picture. Rather, it enhances our chances of export. Because, uh, 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 because of the war in U Ukraine, a lot of uh, countries that are used to import from Ukraine or Russia uh, are not having such imports. So there's need for us to fill the gap out there, to fill the gap. Uh, that has, I mean, that the war is uh, is causing right now, and not only in Egypt. I had a phone call from uh, from from Germany. Somebody called me from Germany to say it, uh, that a lot of Nigerian products that were there that there are no products. All the stores are almost empty because of the war, because of the fact that they were getting these products from uh, like wheat from 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 either Ukraine or or, or, or Russia, and that there is need for us to uh, leverage on that and see how we can get our products out there. So what we intend to do is we are going to sit down and form a think tank to see how uh, Nigeria or our exporters can, can reach out there and identify those countries that need our products or that have been hit by the consequences of the uh, Ukraine-Russian uh, war and so that uh, we can leverage on that and send our products out there. All right, is the NEPC working on adding value to some of these uh, products instead of you know, sending raw materials of just the seed, you know, is the NEPC working along that line? NEPC has always been working to add value because we're not a sense of adding value to any product. Of course, you will agree with me that once you add value, you generate employment, you create more industries or establish more industries, and, 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 and of course, uh, uh, poverty is uh, uh, reduced or eradicated by adding value. And of course, you also know that by the time you send raw commodities out there, you are actually building another economy. I mean, I mean, another person's economy. But you see, we have to face reality. Adding value, uh, uh, adding value comes with so many things. One of it is infrastructure, and one of it is power. If you don't have the power to run the machines, you have a problem with adding value. And so, and so that's why we sometimes we sympathize with our exporters, and we don't have much that to say. See. Uh, well, while well, we encourage adding value, but until things are done well or the, we get all the correct indices or the infrastructure, you can go ahead and export what we have. We have a program called Export Expansion Grant Scheme. I mean, it's, it's a, an EEG scheme, an incentive scheme that, are, that is given to exporters. In that scheme, uh, we, we, we give a percentage of people that have exported and repatriated back their process back to Nigeria. Uh, and so, in giving the percentage, the value, the more you add value, the more percentage you get in that EEG scheme. So the idea is to discourage raw, uh, export of raw commodities uh, and, and encourage value addition. But like I said, sometimes if you listen to the, the stories of these exporters, uh, they are handicapped. Uh, they are handicapped. So, but NEPC, our focus is to ensure that value 
is added. And of course, you can see the RT, the race to, race to 2000 uh, Forex program by the CBN, value addition, value addition was the main key thing in that policy and which NEPC uh, totally support. Much, uh, Dr. Ezra Yakusak, the Executive Director, Nigeria Export Promotion Council. We do hope that you will help the, the handicap that the manufacturer and the exporters are facing because uh, it's for the good of the economy. Thank you so much. Welcome back from Cairo. We hope to see more activities at the Trade Thank House you very much. in Cairo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.